Hey everyone, it's Maze Frog, and today I'll be teaching you all Decoy's Bird Whistle. So, we have to give this sound a difficulty rating. Personally, I would rate this sound a solid 9 or maybe even a 10 out of 10 on the difficulty scale. When I was learning this sound, to me it felt like it was that difficult. I'm not kidding when I say this is the, the hardest whistle I've ever learned. Out of all the whistles I can do, this is the hardest. But I'm also partly blaming that on the fact that when I was learning the sound, there was no real helpful info I could find or any real helpful adequate tutorial. So I'm hoping to change that today with this tutorial, and maybe knock the difficulty down to actually about a seven or an eight, but it's still a very difficult sound, very difficult just by nature. And it is going to require a lot of patience and precision and dedication and experimentation and all that. But hey, let's try and learn it. All right, so the first thing we want to do is we want to take the tongue, make it nice and flat, and then lightly, gently bite the sides of the tongue. Okay, now why are we doing this? We're doing this because the tongue position for Deco's bird whistle is a very unnatural one. Your tongue isn't going to like it, and it's likely going to try and jump out of place and fly out of place and stuff so we we want to sort of keep it in place but we're not gonna bite too hard especially not in the beginning that's not gonna help us at all because in the beginning we're gonna be looking for the right tongue position and it's gonna be different for everyone so biting too hard is just gonna make things harder and more frustrating now speaking from experience plus in the beginning the whistle is gonna be very very tiny and very gentle so you're gonna have to be very tiny and gentle with it. So don't force it, don't bite too hard, it's not gonna help at all, especially not in the beginning. Moving on to step two, baby. Okay. All right, so that's step one already completed, and this is where we move on to step two. And step two is tricky. And I feel like this is where a lot of the confusion about Dequiz Bird Whistle actually comes from. I feel like this is where a lot of the common questions about Dequiz Bird Whistle actually come from, because you know, what's that weird little gap and how do we blow out the air and stuff and I, I get the confusion it is confusing it's very unusual both sonically and visually so I want to clear things up by giving you guys a basic understanding of a different whistle all right and that whistle is the laser whistle all right so the laser whistle is this it's not a very difficult sound it's fun it's loud it's a whistle you know a lot of cool stuff with it but basically how it works is you take the tongue make it nice and flat and then put it under your top teeth okay so that it doesn't really stick out far beyond the top teeth it's just kind of right stays there like that okay so what you do from there is you kind of relax it then you kind of relax your tongue and make it droop down like that a little bit now you don't need crazy tongue tricks for that i promise and you don't need crazy tongue tricks for decoys whistle spoiler so once you have that done your tongue should be in this shape and um what do you do from there Right, so that's going to require some practice, but what you do from there is you take your bottom lip and you curl it over your bottom teeth. You shift your jaw forwards a little bit because that helps. Then you bring the tongue, the teeth and the bottom lip closer together. And you should end up with a shape like this where there is a gap in between uh, the tongue and the top teeth and the tongue and the bottom lip, if that makes sense. And so what you're going to do here and I'm not sure if this is actually how the actual physics behind this whistle work, but what it feels like we're doing here is we're blowing air out of that little droop and we're catching that airstream with our bottom lip. That's what it feels like we're doing, right? So in the beginning, we're gonna get like a faint little, just like a faint little windy tone, but it's gonna be quite tonal. It's gonna sound like a whistle. And then if we train that, then you know we'll get better and better and we'll eventually get the laser whistle. <laughs> so, um, an important detail, an interesting quirk of the laser whistle is if you take your tongue and you shift it slightly to the right or the left, doesn't matter, so that it'll be under one tooth, all right, under one tooth, and then, you do a laser whistle and you keep it tiny, then you'll be able to produce like an ear piercing whistle. It's, it's gonna be 10 times louder, 10 times higher in pitch. Yeah, it's, it's just crazy. Like, it's, it's, it's actual insanity. Okay, so this is all cool, but why am I telling you guys this, right? Why am I telling you guys this? And this is important. It's because I am assuming that decoy's bird whistle is actually just a variation of the laser whistle. Now why? Because they don't look the same. 
and they don't even feel the same, right? I can say that they don't feel the same, but it would make sense because if we look closely, both in the laser whistle and in decoy's bird whistle, first of all, there's a gap in between the tongue and the top teeth and the tongue and something on the bottom that's catching that airstream, right? Now, in the case of the laser whistle, that's something on the bottom that we use to catch the airstream with is our bottom lip that's curled over our bottom teeth, right? And in the case of decoy's bird whistle, that's something on the bottom is just our bottom teeth, right? That might not seem like much, but that's precisely the thing that allows us to use our lips when doing decoy's bird whistle, right? That's what allows us to do all that crazy lip stuff. Testing number one. Thing number two is a lot of the quirks of the laser whistle actually work with decoy's bird whistle like, for example, that weird quirk that I told you about where you shift your tongue under one tooth and you do the whistle. Yeah, we're going to be doing that for decoy's bird whistle. And this whole decoy's bird whistle is actually just a variation of the laser whistle thing would explain that weird little gap, right? Is because if you look closely, when you do the laser whistle under one tooth, there is a similar gap. And that gap is there because of two things. It's because number one, there is still that droop. And number two is there is just a huge amount of air going through a tiny little spot in your mouth. So it sort of pushes the tongue back. And, you know, that's also the case for decoy's bird whistle. Decoy's bird whistle is actually really small and there's still quite a significant amount of air going through that one little gap. So that's why it looks like the tongue is almost folded back, like almost like you're doing a tongue trick, like, but we aren't actually doing any tongue tricks. So that uh, tongue fold is not forced. It's just what happens when you do the whistle correctly and you know, cleanly. So I hope this made sense. I hope that this clears up some of the confusion um, surrounding this uh, part of the whistle. And I hope this also makes it clear what exactly we're looking for. We're looking for that slight, windy, laser whistly type tone, right? So moving back to the tutorial. All right, so from here, what we do is we take the tongue, right? Keep it nice and flat, make sure to bite down on the sides lightly, remember, just like I told you. Then what we do from here is we take the tip of the tongue and position it under one tooth. It can either be the right one or the left one. It really doesn't matter. I personally do the right one. I'm not sure which one decoy does, but it really does not matter. So this is truly where we start practicing, exercising and grinding. A good exercise, I think, is just trying to make like an SH sound, but with this tongue position. So that would be something like remember not to force be very gentle especially in the beginning right just like i told you don't bite too hard don't blow too hard that's the easiest way to get there another exercise we could be doing is making a ch sound like ch -ch -ch. but with this tongue position that's how you get those individual little bird chirps And then from here, we just practice and we experiment. The thing about this whistle is it's done with the teeth and the tongue and our tongues and teeth are all drastically different. So, you know, you're really going to have to do some experimenting, but it's, it's interesting. It's fun. And, you know, I believe in you and I think you can do it. All right, so that's basically the tutorial right there. That's all the basic stuff you need to know. And right now I just wanted to quickly discuss a couple of fun techniques and a couple of fun things you can do with this whistle. So number one, vocalizing it. It's always really fun. You can do it with chest voice, throat bass, even falsetto, all of that works. Super cool. You know, next thing would be all the lip stuff that I talked about in the video already. You know, you can roll your lips with it. You can say, bub, 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 bub. That's why this whistle is so great for mimicking bird sounds, because it's really tiny and high pitched by nature. And then, you know, you have all this extra control with your lips and stuff. You can really modulate it, you know. It's truly awesome. Another fun little technique that I noticed Decoy does a lot is sort of switching from regular nasal throw bass to throw bass with Decoy whistle. <laughs> I think it sounds great. Uh, I think it's a super cool technique. Of course, obviously you can do that for all the other vocalizations. Another little thing that Decoy does is he 
uses falsetto and decoys bird whistle as an interesting pluck sound, like that's also pretty interesting. So yeah, that's them really. I hope you had fun watching this tutorial. I hope this was informative. Sorry if it was very long and wordy. I just, I know this is a hard whistle and I just wanted to explain this whistle as, you know, as, as, as best as I can, wanted to give as much information as I can about this whistle. So to hopefully make the learning process a bit easier and a bit less confusing and a bit more fun. I also linked a couple of useful images in the description so you can download them, watch, view them freely for free and, you know, <laughs> use them. Remember to have a lot of fun learning this whistle. Don't make it frustrating, make it fun. And bye-bye. Uh, funny, be uh, happy beatboxing. <laughs>